Hey everybody, Patton here, welcome back. The Odroid XU4, hands down my absolute favorite little computer to play my games on. And that's because it is the perfect mixture of power and affordability. This thing is super cheap, it's like just over $50. Some of the specs you can see here, it's got a Samsung Octa-Core CPU, a Mali T6 28 MP6, two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, two USB ports, an ethernet port, HDMI out, and like it says, low cost, small form factor, high performance. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up. There's only three things you need. You'll need a micro SD card, the image file, which contains a software you're gonna be flashing onto the system, and a program called Etcher that we're gonna to use to flash that image to the system. One of my favorite images comes from the RA, or the Retro Arena. This image was specifically made for the XU4. I'll leave a download link in my description where you can find it. You can see here the image is a pretty good size, 7.5 gigabytes. So once you start up Etcher, all you have to do is click Select Image, navigate to wherever you keep your image file, hit open at the bottom. In the middle part here where it says mass storage device, you want to click change and you're going to select the drive letter that your micro SD card is plugged into. Then click continue. Then you click the flash button. And you'll see here how fast the program is flashing the files and about how long it's going to take. After the files are flashed completely, it'll run a scan to make sure that they were done correctly. I have a micro SD card that I flashed already with the image that we're going to use for the rest of this video. You're just going to insert this into the back of the XU4. I can't show you exactly how to do it because I have mine in the OG ST case right here. But if we look at the back of the case, you can see exactly where it goes in between the HDMI port and the power port. Now you can plug in a Wi-Fi adapter to one of the USB ports for Wi-Fi access but I prefer to connect my ethernet cable directly into the XU4. So the image is flashed, all the hardware is hooked up, we're gonna turn it on and take a look. So you can see after a short intro, we're given this welcome screen. The first step it asks you to do is configure a gamepad. And I've used two different controllers that worked perfectly with this. The first is an 8-bit Doe FC30 Pro controller and a PlayStation 3 controller. And then you just follow the prompts. We're gonna hit the up, down, left, right button on the D-pad, start, select, a, B, X, Y, left and right shoulders, left and right triggers, pushing in the left thumbstick and the right thumbstick, left analog up, down, left and right, and the same with the right stick. And then I'm gonna use the PlayStation button for the hotkey. So hitting left and right of the controller will scroll us through the different systems and options menus. The only option I'm interested in right now is this one for show IP. At the very top, it shows you what your IP address is for the system. You want to write that down. We're going to need that to add our ROMs and BIOS files. Now we're going to head back to the PC where I'm going to show you where to add your games, your BIOS files, and a couple themes. So to connect, make sure that your system is still turned on and you have the ethernet cable plugged in or you're connected to Wi-Fi. So why you needed that IP address is because we're going to network connect to the XU4 from our PC. You're going to open up any folder on your system. You're going to hit backslash twice and then enter that IP address. If we did it correctly, we should have a folder that looks like this. The three folders we're interested in today are the ROMs folders, BIOS, and ES themes. The ROMs go into the ROMs folder and then into whatever system you're adding your ROMs for. BIOS files go into the BIOS folder, and the ES themes folder is where you're gonna add your themes. You see we have one already here. It's Retrorama from Phil's Doodles. We have a few we're gonna add here. We've added Retrorama already, so all we're gonna do is take our other themes, right click, and copy. We're going to paste them right into the ES themes folder. You're going to do the same with your BIOS and your ROM files. Highlight the BIOS files you're going to move, right click and copy, and paste them right into our BIOS folder. So now it's time to add our ROM. So here's the entire N64 catalog. I'm going to highlight all of them, right click and copy, open up the ROMs folder, scroll down until I get to N64, and I'm going to paste them right here. All right, so I have added a ton of games to this thing. So now that all of our ROMs and BIOS and theme files are in place, it's time to head back to the XU4Q and the emulation station. Let's take a look at these themes that we added first. We're gonna hit start to go into the main menu, down to UI settings. We're gonna go down to theme set, and here's the five themes that we added from Phil's Doodles, Retro-Rama, Space Oddity, Stranger Stuff, Swine Apple, and PD Comics. You'll notice some of the boxes are blank. That's because we haven't scraped any information yet. Once you've scraped everything and you've added your box art, thumbnails, and video screens, this is gonna look really nice.
Now we'll step back for a minute. I'm gonna showcase some other systems that we've added. Enemy fighter.
If you do decide to pick one of these up or anything else from the Ameridroid website, I do have a couple discount codes for you guys. Using the code Patent Supporter 5, you get $5 off of any $50 order, or Patent Supporter 10 to get $10 off any $100 or more order. And of course, once again, thank you to the Retro Arena for making such an awesome image to go along with this really great hardware. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through Patreon. Eric Colon. Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, William Wend, Yaroslav Orudzov.